All right, now we're going to take a quick look um, at uh, the SysTick and the uh, Cortex core that's in the uh, Kinetis processor. Once again, we're going to use this example program from the Freescale Wiki Clock Setup SysTick. Um, and the goal is here, uh, you know, th there are two main things we're going to see here. One, we're going to learn about a little bit about the ARM core itself and then about interrupts. So, you know, once you kind of grab that project, if you watch some of the other videos, you probably already have it, is that um, there is this uh, function called init sysTick. Now, within the ARM core, the ARM Cortex M4, there is uh, peripherals that regardless of who makes it, whether it's Freescale, NXP, ST Micro, uh, it'll be there. So because it's part of the actual core of the of the chip. So I have the Cortex M4 uh, generic user's guide. You won't find this in the Freescale manual because it's not a Freescale. It's not a Freescale part. Um, so under peripherals, um, we're going to look at uh, the system timer. Um, this is a very common thing that whenever you kind of bring up, uh, you know, a new microcontroller, the first thing you want to do is generate some sort of repetitive, you know, repetitive kind of tick for, for basic timing. Um, ARM kind of saw this and said, well, why don't we just build it into the core? That way when, you know, even though there will be different people implementing this core, a programmer is guaranteed that you'll have the SysTick sys timer uh, and it will kind of always appear at the same time physical addresses, uh, it'll always kind of work the same way. So the way the SysTick works is that it's a 24-bit timer and that it counts down from this what they call reload value to zero. Um, once it gets to zero, it can generate an interrupt um, or a flag and then the value from this RVR register uh, is kind of reload and it starts over again. So it's basically a counter that counts down when it gets to zero, it starts over again at some prescribed value. So, you know, it's pretty easy to see, it, you know, you could kind of change that reload value and get, uh, you know, different interrupt rates. So, like I said, it's in every ARM Cortex M4 core, it's also in the M3 and the M0, uh, but uh, it, it's pretty simple. So, what we do in the SysTick to set it up, the uh, the the uh, header file for the Kinetis does have all of the, the you know the macros to kind of talk to the core registers as well. The first thing that I set up is the RVR register, um, because we're using the the clock module. We know that the core clock, which um, we can look at our distribution diagram uh, in, in the manual, it's running at 96 megahertz. Um, it's not that hard to figure out that if you know you're counting from some value down to zero, if you kind of take the core clock and divide it by kind of the rate that you want uh, it to count, you know, to kind of overflow. In this case, I define a macro called SysTick Frequency. Um, I believe if we look in the headers under SysTick.h, I say 1000. That means we will get an interrupt every one kilohertz. Uh, simply divide those two numbers and you'll figure out, well, you know, how many counts does the SysTick timer have to count uh, to get that interrupt rate. So we set that. You know, the next thing we need to do is uh, simply enable it and enable the, uh, the interrupt. So if we kind of look at the control and status register, um, you know, it's pretty simple. There's three bits. Uh, we have this clock source bit, we set that, it's whatever the processor is running at, 96 megahertz. Um, we want to enable the interrupts, so there's a bit to enable interrupts, and then there's an enable for just the counter itself. So these macros are kind of defined as well in the uh, Kinetis header file. Um, and once you do this, you know, it's ready to go. Now it's very important here that uh, if you were to write this code without doing anything else, um, you, you wouldn't get the behavior you want because while you've enabled interrupts, the processor doesn't know what to do when you get the interrupt. Um, so we need to define an interrupt routine. Now, here's an important note is that built into the Cortex core is a, uh, called the nested vector interrupt controller. Um, 
it turns out that there's you know 255 256 of these uh, interrupt vectors um, the first 16 are reserved for the arm core and what that means is the first 16 don't run through the interrupt controller um, as soon as you enable this uh, in the core you know the core, cortex core itself it's enabled so um, you know just setting this bit right here it's it's ready to go um, so what you can do is within the reference manual for the kinetis it'll kind of tell you and and uh, tell you about how it implements the you know the the nested vector interrupt controller but it kind of alludes to the fact that the first 16 don't actually pass through the uh, interrupt controller they go directly to the core so enabling it in the core enables it and the cystic timer is at vector number 15. now there is a distinction between interrupt vectors and its IRQ number. Basically if you take the vector minus the IRQ, um, I'm sorry, vector minus 16 you get the IRQ um, and what that means is is that the IRQ represents the non-core vectors, things that are going to pass through the vector interrupt controller. Now what's kind of cool about the arm is uh, in the ARM Cortex is that context switching is done all in hardware so there's absolutely nothing special about an interrupt routine uh, from the Cortex point of view um, it's just a normal function the, the the state of the machine is saved you know by the Cortex core itself so all you have to do is write your interrupt routine so here I have one called SysTick IRQ and it just has a variable called delay timer tick that if it's less than some you know 32 bit value it just increments so every you know once every millisecond in the background we're gonna have this value increment by one um, notice I declare it up here as static meaning it's local to this file it's volatile meaning the compiler shouldn't assume uh, its value it should always read it because it can uh, change outside of the context of the compiler and it's an unsigned int so it's a 32 bit number now to assign to tell the to tell the compiler that we don't actually have to tell it anything that's a vector we have to populate the vector table so you know kind of by default whenever you set up a new project there's this kineticisinit.c this has a default vector table the vector table is simply a, a table of addresses you know there's 256 of them um, you know in this particular core there's 109 uh, Kinetis 119 because it doesn't use all the possible interrupt sources, but it's simply just a table of addresses. When the when the Kinetis uh, when the core gets an interrupt location, it ha it just looks in the table. You know, so if we get one from the SysTick, uh, which is number 15, it looks at entry 15 in the table and jumps. Now at boot up, this init hardware function is called. There is a register that set that can be set up to tell you where the table is you can relocate the table anywhere in memory in this case it relocates it to something called vector table ignore all this nonsense in front of the declaration but vector table is simply a function pointer table it's just a pointer you know just has function names as you can see here uh, populated if we come to number 15 which we looked in the manual Notice how I just put in SysTick IRQ. It just wants to know the address of the um, the address of the function. The reason we have all this nonsense in front of the declaration, this is just the code warrior, its compiler, of telling it to make sure to put the vector table in a specific place in the flash. So if you were to go look at the linker command file, um, the vector table has a has a uh, you know it, its own spot in the table under dot interrupts and the dot interrupts start at location zero so that's just kind of a fancy way of telling the compiler make sure to put the interrupt table you know at at location zero you can put it anywhere but by default it's, it's at zero um, and unless you have a good reason to you can leave that alone so like I said the first 15 I'm sorry the first 16 are reserved for the arm core the the first one is actually the, the you know the reset vector um, then everything after that there's a non maskable interrupt and you'll notice here that most if you don't specify something there's always this thing called unassigned ISR 
Well, unassigned ISR is defined as this function called ISR default. ISR default is just an empty function. They just want a kind of catch-all that if you haven't defined it, it goes somewhere. Um, and you can kind of set a breakpoint there. I just populated uh, number 15 with Systicke IRQ. You'll notice, make sure to include your prototype for the function. So Systicke.h has the prototype for my vector. Uh, so the com compiler can kind of resolve everything. So once you populate the table, and once you call this init sys tick, every millisecond delay timer tick will increment by one. Um, I use that as just kind of a cute way of creating a delay function, a blocking delay function. So down here I have a function called delay milliseconds, and we know that this variable delay timer tick increments once per millisecond. You pass in how many ticks, you know, if you pass in a value of a thousand, that's a thousand milliseconds or one second, that it'll sit in this while loop while delay timer tick counts up to there. First resets it, then counts up. Now this function, um, it's useful to use sometimes for debugging. It's a horrible way to implement a delay, you know, in an application. Uh, because while you're doing this, the processor, every any other foreground operation stops. All the other interrupt vectors will fly, but if you're ever joining in your main loop, um, it's going to sit in here. You know, there's a cute way if you want to have it execute the wait for interrupt instruction. Um, you can put in low power modes and have it kind of go into a sleep mode. But this is just a basic, uh, you know, basic example of how you do a delay based upon the sys tick. Uh, with, you know, with interrupts. So if we come to our main code here, that once we initialize the clock, initialize the sys tick, um, we can kind of call this delay function. And in a previous example, we toggle a register. So every 500 milliseconds, you know, we toggle this register and increment this counter. Uh, it's just a quick and dirty way to get, um, you know, delay function. Now you could do other things in the interrupt, like set other flags or, um, do kind of delays uh, in a different way, but this is just a quick example of how you enable a core interrupt and use the sys tick.